Lesson five for chapter four is about equivalent ratios and rates, and we should be on page 313. So if you didn't read that on the Canvas page to turn to page 313, do that now. Now, we have already been talking about equivalent ratios and rates for um, several days now. So I want you to think about, before we get started, uh, what that means. All right, so we've been generating equivalent ratios for a while now, and even before that, we've been doing equivalent fractions for years. Now, uh, one important um, tool to use in order to figure out whether two ratios are actually equivalent is by using unit rates or unit ratios. So remember, the difference between a rate and a ratio is that rates have two very clearly different sets of attributes, whereas unit ratios could actually be the same kinds of things like cups to cups, dogs to dogs, that kind of thing. Okay, so there are different ways to determine two rates, if two rates are equivalent. One way is to examine unit rates by comparing quantities as rates in the simplest form you can determine if the relationship between the two quantities are the same. So if we buy two tickets for $26 and we buy four tickets for $54, do we spend the same amount per ticket? So to figure that out, we're going to divide the bottom uh, denominator by the same number to get the number one. So two divided by two is one. 26 divided by two is 13. So this rate is $13 for one ticket. That's a unit rate. We'll do the same thing over here. If the denominator has a 4, we're going to divide it by 4 to get 1. And now we're going to divide the number 52 by 4 and we get 13. So $13 per ticket, $13 per ticket. That means that these two original ratios um, and rates were actually equivalent. Okay, so the book walks you through this uh, next example and it, it shows already shows the work for this. It says, use the unit rates to determine whether each pair of rates is equivalent. Explain your reasoning. So um, 15 pounds lost in five weeks. Is that an equivalent rate to 12 pounds lost in three weeks? So they express the rate um, as a, a fractional form, 15 pounds over five weeks. And if we are going to um, create a unit rate, we're going to divide the bottom five by five and divide the top five by five we get three pounds in one week. Then we have 12 pounds in three weeks. So we're gonna uh, create a unit rate by dividing three by the number three. We get one, 12 divided by three is four. So I'm gonna ask you this, uh, which one of these scenarios did the person lose weight faster? Is 15 pounds in five weeks faster weight loss than 12 pounds over, uh, in three weeks, yes or no? Okay, so as part of our explanation, we should be able to determine uh, the rates are not equivalent. Uh, but if you lose three pounds in one week, that's less weight loss than losing four pounds in one week. Okay, so this second person actually lost weight faster. This is actually probably the healthier way of losing weight. Uh, if you lose too much weight in one week, then that's, um, that's not good for you. But still, this person lost the weight faster. Okay, so in this next example, it says three t-shirts cost $21, and then five t-shirts cost $35. And it wants us to know, okay, are, are we paying the same amount per t-shirt? So we're going to divide the number of three t-shirts by three and we get one. 21 divided by three is seven. So this first situation we paid seven dollars per shirt. Now in the next one, $35 for five shirts, we're going to divide five by five and get one. And we divide 35 by five and we get seven. So we also paid seven dollars for one shirt. So in this situation, these are both equivalent rates. Uh, so they spent the same amount of money per shirt together. So the second number says uh, 42 flowers in seven vases or 54 flowers in nine vases. We want to know if that uh, those flowers will be putting in vases at an equivalent rate. The first thing we do is actually write the original rate. So go ahead and put, um, I want you to type in what the first rate should be. Okay, very good. You should have did 42 flowers 
slash seven or over seven bases. So this is flowers per vase. All right. Now I want that to be a unit rate. So what do I do need to do to seven? What do I need to divide by in order to get one? Go ahead and type that in for me. All right, very good. We're going to divide that by seven. So we're also going to divide 42 by seven. What is 42 divided by seven? Please write that down. All right, that is six. So we actually have six flowers for every vase is the original rate for the first situation. Now I want you to write the rate for the second one, 54 flowers in nine vases. Go ahead and write that for me. Very good. You should have written 54 flowers for every nine vases. And we want to divide this to create a unit rate. So what number do I divide nine by to equal one? Answer that for me. Very good. We're going to answer, we're going to divide that by nine. So nine divided by nine is one. So 54 divided by nine is what number? Very good. That is actually six. So that's going to be six flowers for every vase. So guess what? Are these two, uh, rates is 42 to 7 equivalent uh, an equivalent rate to 54 over 9 yes or no all right the answer is yes because if you find their um, unit rates six flowers in a vase six flowers in a vase they are equal all right another tool we can use is uh, generating equivalent fractions you can use equivalent fractions to decide whether ratios are uh, and rates are equivalent. So um, use equivalent fractions to determine the pair of ratios or rates are equivalent. Explain your reasoning. So if we have three baskets out of seven attempts playing basketball, is that equivalent to someone who got nine baskets out of 14 attempts? We're going to write an equivalent fraction. Okay, so I'm going to, off to the side, I'm going to write the original rate three to seven. And um, I'm noticing that this, uh, this 9 right here, that would go on top of the second one. So before I even do the bottom one, I'm going to ask myself, what would I do if I'm going to generate an equivalent fraction? What number times 3 is going to be equal to 9? Answer that for me, please. Very good. I'm going to multiply 3 times 3 to get 9. So if I want to find an equivalent fraction, I have to multiply the bottom number by... Uh, 3 also. So what is 7 times 3? Answer that for me, please. Very good. That would be 21. Now, this says 9 out of 14. So is 9 over 21 equal to 9 over 14? Yes or no? No is the answer. So if you make nine baskets in 21 attempts, that's not the same as making nine baskets in 14 attempts. So these fractions are not equivalent because their rates are not equivalent. Okay, we want to determine whether 10 scissors for every six staplers is the same rate as five scissors for every two staplers. So I'm going to go ahead and write the original ratio, and that's going to be 10 staplers for every six, pa uh, scratch that, 10 scissors for every six um, staplers. The second one is five scissors for every two staplers. So I'm going to put the number five on top, and then I'm going to see if this bottom is going to be equal. What do I do to the number 10? How do I scale it down to number five? That's going to involve division. So 10 divided by what number equals 5? Go ahead and answer that for me. Very good. That's going to be 2. So now I'm going to divide the bottom number also by 2. So 6 divided by 2 is what number? Answer that for me, please. Very good. That is 3. So if you have 5, if we're actually using the equivalent fractions here, if we have five pairs of scissors, that should be equivalent to uh, three staplers. But if we notice over here, it says five scissors for two staplers. So is two equivalent to three? Yes or no? Very good. The answer is no. This is not a situation in which we have an equivalent rate or an equivalent ratio. 
Okay, so the last example for today is saying that you could also use a proportion. A proportion is an equation stating that two ratios or rates are equivalent. By determining that the two ratios are equivalent, you are stating that they form a proportion. So Charlotte's tomato plant produced 16 tomatoes and her pepper plant produced eight peppers. Ryan's tomato plant produced four tomatoes and his pepper plant produced two peppers. Use these ratios to form, uh, do, excuse me, do these ratios form a proportion? Do they have the same rate is what they're asking. So if we have 16 tomatoes and eight peppers, did, uh, and then we have two tomatoes and four peppers. Okay. Now, they're actually writing this a little bit differently. In previous problems, uh, if we wanted to figure out uh, if they're equivalent or not, we would actually say, and I'm going to go ahead and draw this, we would have 16 over 8. Wow. Okay. Let's try this again. We would have 16 over 8. And then we said, okay, so 16 and 4, they have a relationship. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, what do I do to 16 to equal 4? I would divide that by what number? Go ahead and do that for me. Very good. We're going to divide that by 4. So if you divide the top by 4, we also need to divide the bottom number by 4. So 16 divided by 4 equals 4. What is 8 divided by 4? Please answer that. All right, the answer is 2. So you'll notice that what they chose to do instead was they said times 1 fourth. And, okay, so we'll try that again. Times 1 fourth. But they got the same result as what we did when we multiplied by the whole number 4. So we, we've talked about this before, reciprocals. One-fourth is the reciprocal of four whole, which is four over one. So to, multiplying by one-fourth is the same as dividing by four. Okay, now um, this is the last example for today. We're going to do some guided practice together.